Good day and welcome again to my side of town. In this episode, you will meet another group of people. Some of them maybe you've seen in our neighborhood once or twice, but never had a chance to know them better. So now is the time. Join me again in the next 60 minutes and be a part of the loop. I'm Dante Lazon and you're in my side of town. Before IMG, I was a civil engineer, accountant, I was a plain housewife. Before IMG, I used to be a doctor. I was a maintenance crew, manufacturing operator. I'm a housewife. I was an accounting clerk. I'm a medical doctor. I am an engineer. Before IMG, I used to be a teacher. I was a government employee. A production worker. Geologist. I am a bank employee. Before IMG, I was an admin staff. I was a seaman. Design engineer. I was a deli manager. I was a telecom engineer. Before IMG, I was quality director. I used to be a doctor. Production operator. Industrial engineer. IT home-based freelancer. Before IMG, I was a manufacturing specialist. I was an exporter. Engineer. Software developer. I was a Caltex dealer. Admin officer. I was a florist. Before IMG, I was a service crew. I'm great. I am great. I am G. I am great. I am G. I am G. I am G. I am great. I am G. I am great. 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 I am We're back and you're in my title now. My name is Dan Colosan. You know, our first guest is somebody that I listen to every morning when I drive to wow, the office. Wow, I didn't know that. And he perks me up with his <laughs> adrenaline, his, his power, and uh, the way he brightened up my day with his trivia on radio and his kind of music. He has a morning show, as a matter of fact, one of the longest running radio show, uh, 6 to 9 a.m. on Y101, Mondays and Fridays. At the same time, he has a uh, philosophical podcast on YouTube and Facebook. And he is also the Vice President for Sales and Marketing Y101. And he's an events host. Please welcome in my side of town, Jiggy Jr. Hi. Hi, sir. Good afternoon or uh, whatever time they're watching this uh, uh, show. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's, it's always a pleasure to uh, talk to uh, my fellow media people, media men. Yeah. I see myself in you <laughs> when I started, actually. I was, I was on FM okay. before I, was be I, I became a news person. And the transition wasn't easy, actually, because uh, FM, uh, you, you're hype. You're supposed to, you know, uh, we call it barking during our time. And then uh, when you switch to newscast, you have to be, you know, put in a poker face and, you know, things like that. But, but I thought the most effective uh, uh, TV newscasters came from radio, like yourself and Noli De Castro and all those. They all came from radio. So I think you have an extra added advantage if you come from radio because you enunciate words uh, better than people who are not from radio, right? I think because of the training. Yeah. Because on radio, we can't afford to have that air. Correct, yeah. And we're supposed to be spontaneous. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about you. <laughs> I'm just curious, uh, how long have you been in broadcast now? Oh man, without revealing my age, I've yeah. been uh, with Y101 for the past 25 years. I started in Y101 in 1994, wow. although I did work for another radio station, uh, Killer B, now Magic, mm -hmm. in 1992 to 94. I worked for two years there, then I moved over uh, to Y101 in 1994. So, uh, give or take uh, 25 years in Y101 and two years in, in, in uh, Magic. Be, yeah. So, Jiggy in the Morning is uh, one of the longest running show. How, how long has it been on the air? Oh, um, well, I've been with Y101 for 25 years. I've probably been doing the morning show for roughly pr perhaps 10 to 15 years. Because mm -hmm. I was actually at the time when Jack the Wack uh, was still doing the morning show when yes, I came in. Yes, right? I remember. So, I would pinch hit for him because he was a, a busy uh, running uh, uh, for uh, council at that time when I, I first uh, came in. So every time he uh, would do a campaign trail in the morning, I did, he'd call me in the evening, hey, Jiggy, mm -hmm. I can't do my morning show, yeah. so can you do it? So I've been doing, I did that several times a week. In fact, I'd probably do that more times than he did um, uh, back in the 90s. So uh, probably a good 
15 to uh, maybe 18 years of doing the morning show. I think you you belong to the I don't know what generation is that because I used to listen to Y11 <laughs> when Kawa was still there and then then uh, all this guy um, uh, Jack Dewat was yeah, still yeah, there yeah. and uh, still I listen to the station yeah, because yeah. it's niche programming. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to ask because I don't know. Um, sometimes I feel the frustration when I listen to uh, other FM stations. No mention of you know call signs. Why not? <laughs> um, because FM nowadays, sad to say, uh, that's my personal opinion. Sounds a like a <coughs> nowadays. Okay. Uh, uh, it's it's personality driven, and then if you listen to FM, like it sounds like AM. But you guys maintain your image that's been you know since the past how many years now, and except for like Y one one and and W Rock and and other stations. So. Um, the landscape has changed. What's your, what's your take on that? The landscape of Cebu Radio has changed, you mean? Uh, Cebu and probably <coughs> in Manila. Me. And well, actually, it's, it, it is a result of technology. I mean, there's so many competitors now for radio. There's so many uh, ways and means in which we entertain ourselves now, not just uh, on the regular radio uh, set, but also on your cell phones. You know, there's so many... Uh, you know, my, my kids, for example, who are teenagers, they don't listen to radio as much, although they still listen to that in, in the morning. But most of the time, they, they consume media through, through their media devices, through their cell phones. Yeah. So I think uh, the landscape has changed dramatically because of the competitors uh, of radio. There's an onslaught of, of shows on, on YouTube, on Facebook, on, on Instagram that, uh, that they're getting a lot of interest from, from the audience. So I think um, radio had, had to reinvent itself. So I think, in in a in a manner of speaking, uh, this is uh, why radio has become like this because it's trying to re reinvent itself. You mentioned uh, it's more like AM. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. Maybe you're saying that there's more talk now. There's more uh, human voices now. I is that what you're trying to suggest, sir? Um, like uh, the the uh, AM news presentation transferred to the FM yeah. frequency. I'm talking about Brigada, who yeah. claims to be number one in the survey. Well, it's, it's a good sign probably, but my, my, I, I see, that, see it as a, a, a part of the, ra you know, uh, blame it on the rating game, yeah. because maybe they believe that if you, they don't join the bandwagon, they don't, they don't rate uh, based on the survey results. Well, actually, the best radio shows now uh, always have a digital component. And, you know, you can't just be a radio star anymore. It is true. I mean, I have to admit it. The radio, uh, TV, a uh, long time ago, uh, they said kill the radio star, right? But TV didn't kill the radio star. I think the internet uh, did not kill the radio star, but uh, the internet forced the radio star to invent himself. And he, c he, ha he can't be just a radio star anymore. He has to be an uh, internet star as well. So he has to figure out a way to make uh, himself matter in, in uh, the digital platforms like on, on YouTube and on Facebook and maybe even have your, his presence felt on Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter as well. So you can't just be lazily in radio anymore. You've got to be in all of these platforms. Otherwise, you will be held uh, or you'll be uh, made uh, uh, irrelevant. Is that a good development for the broadcast practitioner? Well, it is, it is, it is um, kind of taxing because you have to multitask. Imagine, if, I'll, I'll, <coughs> gi I'll give you an example, sir. When I'm on board, I have to look at three wide screens, a third computer, my cell phone, okay. uh, the cell phone of, the, of, of uh, the rhythm text line, which is the, the request line, and a landline, which still exists in our, uh, in our booth. I'm not sure why it's still there. but <laughs> So I, I am looking at uh, doing eight things at a time. So it is quite confusing. So, kainumdum ka ng storya nga, nga atong una, sayon ra kayo kayo. Turntable ra, right? Tape deck run. I started with that. Yeah, I mean, like uh, people are romanticizing that. Uh, that was just it. But the, 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 the vinyl, yeah, um, um, tape decks and. Uh, all we should get out We have to play the, the 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 vinyl, right? The vinyl or the or the tape deck, right? But karon, although it's so easy to play music because it's it's in a digital form, but you have so many things to to think about at the same time. So th there's kind of a split brain going on when you're on board. So how do you focus? I can't. I'm not. I, I have to focus <laughs> on many things. So I think it, I, I, I'm, I suspect I'm a little ADHD. That's why uh, <laughs> I can focus on many things. <laughs> uh, you have a, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, pardon me, but uh, I still have to learn a lot of things in terms of the new technology here, uh, especially in the internet and the, the digital uh, platform. You have <coughs> a program in podcast. Am I correct? Is that, is yeah, that, yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I have a podcast. All right, yeah, you have yeah, a podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's Philosopher Podcast. Yeah. Tell us all about it. Well, the Philosopher Podcast is actually a show born out of my desire, my love uh, for having great conversation about two of my favorite topics in the world, which is a no-no in the dining table, oh. politics and religion. Okay. And my mom and my, my folks, my, my, my relatives would always tell me, Pagka pilosopo, gini mo doon. Ah, so and bad. Kanang word nga pilosopo, mangod, it's a bad word in oh. our in our society, in our culture, right? Okay. So the reason why it's called the Philosopher Podcast is I, wanna, I want to steal that word from it being a bad word to a good word. Na okay ra okay kung mo, 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 mo reason out ka. Uh -huh. As long as you have the, you know, the, right, uh, the right arguments, the right uh, conversation uh, 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 trajectory. I think uh, that's what the show is all about. It's a podcast, sir. Uh, in the strictest... Uh, form of uh, uh, the word podcast is supposed to be just audio uh, right. distributed by podcast platforms like uh, uh, the podcaster and iTunes and all that stuff but in the Philippines Mangu, sir, um, it's difficult to uh, uh, matter uh, without being on Facebook and YouTube mm. so ang akong gibuhat, although it's called a podcast technically it's not because it's not uh, it's not yet distributed on a podcast platform it's on Facebook and on YouTube okay so that's the reason why it's still uh, on Facebook and YouTube but the idea here is to uh, put it on the podcast platforms, which is Podcaster and iTunes and many more other platforms. How often does your show uh, <coughs> come on? I here? do it every every once a week. Right. Once a week, yeah. Okay. So uh, the total running time is how many? Uh, one hour? Um, um, you it's can go it's a hours? long form interview. So I, I talk to uh, uh, my guests for hours on end, sometimes two, three hours, uh, which is uh, pretty exciting actually. So the topics will vary from politics well, yeah, to religion yeah, yeah. to it, art. It, it varies music. from from topic to topic, from from person to person as well. Okay. So um, you know, for example, last week my guest was uh, the general manager of Mactan Cebu International Airport, Steve yeah. Dikdikan, yeah. and he was talking about the Mactan Cebu International Airport, and also we were talking about religion and politics and and you know you know his management style. So it, it really depends from person to person, sir. You know, line good. you know, Jiggy, this is interesting because in my times, FM, if you're FM, you're just a DJ. <laughs> we call ourselves platter pusher. Platter because, pusher. Because a vinyl... Uh, what a plato? Like a plato. So you, you push it, you cue it, and then you push it. So we call ourselves platter, platter pusher. And they said that DJs before were better heard than seen. <laughs> because <laughs> just listen. Don't yeah. watch, yeah, don't yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. But now because of uh, the social media and the platforms that you have the live streaming, these jockeys, radio announcers are compelled to look good on, <laughs> on, on, on TV. <laughs> yeah. No problem with you. That, I think you're just one of the <laughs> That's a that's a funny observation. And we, actually, that's the reason why I came. I went to radio because you cannot be seen. You know, I love the the fact that, that you're popular, but nobody knows you. Yeah. That's a, the the anonymity of being in radio is actually the charm. That's why I went I into radio. Personally, I still go for the the time that uh, we just confine ourselves in the booth with the camera because there's still the, a sense of mystery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. An aura of mm. mystery there. But now, makakita no angga. Yeah, that's why. Oh no, yeah. Gamaya ko ng Jiggy Junior. I'm not dako ng atang. I always get that. <laughs> Sales and marketing. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of. I think. Must not have an FM station in the Cebu. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think so. FM, we have more than 20 uh, AM stations, I think, about 13 or 14. I mean, I, I, I lost count. But the, a lot of stations share in the advertising pie. So yeah. how do you guys survive? How do we survive? Yeah, your um, station in particular. Um, you know, um, Y101 has always been one of those radio stations that uh, never flinched. We never blinked. From the get-go, from the beginning, since 1980, we have always been steadfast with our programming. We were the uh, first radio station in the Philippines to bring contemporary hit radio, okay. which was the, the pop music of, of the United States back then. So it's been so for the past uh, almost 40 years now. So I think it's the consistency that, uh, that uh, people and advertisers know about us, that uh, they know uh, if they want uh, the ABC plus 18 to 35 target market, they know where to put their money. So I think it's because of the consistency. That's why uh, people are still uh, advertising with us all through the years. And I think, of course, aside from that, it's the effectivity of, of advertising with the Wawaran because I think uh, uh, the only thing that trumps the results of surveys is the effectivity of a radio campaign. If you advertise with Wawaran, the sales of your, of your company will increase, then that's better than any sales uh, survey out there. Somebody even told me, okay, this station probably are, you know, selling, you know, detergent soaps, bars, etc. But we are selling airlines, hotels, 
because of our music, because mm. of our image, because of our format. And do you, do you believe in survey? Um, yeah, actually, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I'm, I'm the kind of person that believes in, in uh, using science to... Uh, Are the, the figures still reliable? Still, uh... I don't know about the state of, of the survey companies here in, 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 in the Philippines. In fact, um, there's a lot of cloud uh, hanging over the uh, surveys here in, in, in the Philippines, right? Some of them, Abayran or whatever. I, I, I'm, I'm not a privy of what's going on down there in the survey and a department. Lot of stations claiming they're number one. Yeah, yeah because number one here, number one yeah. there. Because in the advertising agencies in Manila, that matters. People in, in Manila who do not know what's going on in Cebu on the ground, they just look at the surveys. So they just look at the numbers, and then you know, if you're number one, you you're guaranteed a windfall in advertising. So I guess that's why they're really focused on the survey part. Like if you mount events, for example, for the station and for for a client, uh, the 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 sampling, the product sampling, the streamering, this this do exist. Yeah, of course, yeah. 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 I mean, like, sampling is, 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 is going to stay there for, forever. People would like to know how something tastes like, and companies would like them to taste how, how, their, how their product tastes like. How do you know, uh, example, if there are wannabes watching, I'm pretty sure they are watching now, <laughs> who like to uh, dreaming of one day to become like you, for example? <laughs> uh, yes. Don't! Don't! <laughs> Don't be like me. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just kidding. Um, this is what I tell my kids all the time. Um, I think in whatever it is that you do in life, communicating, especially in this day and age, is crucial. You can be a doctor, you can be an engineer, but if you don't communicate well, if you don't know how to use the digital platforms, I think uh, you will be uh, at a disadvantage. So I always tell them, you know, that it doesn't matter if you, if you work in media, if you work on radio or television. I think... Uh, I think uh, communicating is now not a nice to have but a necessary skill mm -hmm. so whatever it is that you do in life make sure that uh, you're able to communicate uh, clearly concisely effectively choose the right words and also uh, do it with 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 the passion because I think people will understand you more and will listen to you more if they know it comes from uh, from a good place from the heart Jiggy Junior thank you very much it was Jiggy. my pleasure sir thank yeah. you and more to come here on my side of town after the break. Hold on. Welcome to my side of town. Five or seven marine turtle species in the world can be found in the Philippines. But these marine turtles are threatened by human activities. Stop poaching, egg hunting, slaughter, illegal fishing, and pollution. Help save our endangered marine turtles. A friendly reminder from My TV Cebu, your channel, my channel, and also brought to you by the International Marketing Group or IMG, Kaiser International Health Group Incorporated, and De Los Reyes Optical Clinic. You know, in the world of acting, whether on stage or in film, the actor gets into the character he's supposed to portray. And once he becomes the character, then he is not acting. And that is the art of acting without acting. Now, let's take a cue from our featured personality, an actress in the true sense of the word. She has appeared in numerous stage plays, short and featured films with several acting awards to her credit. She has no doubt at par with her national and international counterpart. I'm talking about Ligaya Rabago. This is her story.
a multi-awarded film actress, thespian, educator, and environmentalist. Although born in Manila to an Ilocano father and a Cebuana mother, Ligaya Rabago is a true blue Cebuana. She is a professor for the past 36 years, but her passion for acting on stage and film has never waned. But as a young girl, she never dreamt of becoming a sought-after actress that she is today. Actually, I was a shy girl. <laughs> A shy girl in the sense that maulaw jud ko o mga performances. Though, I, I used to dance ka ng mga family gatherings. O sige, sayaw, diri. You know, you know those kids na pasayawon da yun. So, masayaw raput ko but never in my wildest dream that I will be acting on stage and uh, in film. It was only in 1981 when she was exposed to the theater for the first time. She joined the Philippine Educational Theater Association or PETA and there was no turning back for this prolific actress. Uh, I started with theater actually. Okay. So when I attended the Philippine Educational Theater Association PETA, PETA that was the time wherein I was so uh, inclined to theater and from 1981 until the present time, uh, theater has been my life. So theater has been my love and in fact I'm the artistic director here in UP, UP Student Theater Arts Guild for Education which is, the acronym is Upstage. Her theater background eventually became her key to enter the film industry. Her acting prowess caught the attention of Cebuano filmmakers. In the year 2008, when a colleague from UP Diliman Theater Arts uh, graduate and professor, he was assigned in International Academy of Film and Television and one of his students was looking for a talent and so uh, he referred that student, uh, a student who is uh, in his thesis uh, time, so he recommended me to him and that was the first time that I was in the film. Ligaya Rabago's career blossomed. She appeared in an internationally released film directed by foreign filmmakers. Uh, 100 Yards. Oh, no. I think, were, were you able to be in I, that I, uh, I, I film saw also? The, I saw the trailer. Yes, so I was one of the actors there and to be directed by Hollywood director and an Asian director uh, was already something, a very great opportunity for me to be working with foreign directors and, of course, foreign actors. Ligaya's passion for acting paid off when she won the Best Actress Award for playing the role of an abortionist in the Kenneth Dagantan horror film, Santissima. Okay, my first award as an actress was my first film. It's not, it's not the first film, but the most significant film for me, my most memorable film for me, that was uh, entitled Santissima. Okay, you watch it? Uh, Were you able to I was watch able it? To read the reviews. Okay, so it was a student film by the first batch of. University of San Carlos uh, Cinema Studies and it's Kenneth Lim Dagatan who is also the director of MA uh, which also gained a lot of uh, commendations abroad 
okay, Sanctissima was really a film which which made me somehow who am I today because with that film uh, I got four awards, Best Actress. Uh, one is uh, the UP, UP Licula International Film Fest and then uh, Nabunturan. Yeah. Uh, it was, I was also the best actress there and that film also brought us to be one of the finalists in the Cinemalaya. You would say, my God, it's the... Because my role there was an abortionist. Oh. By the way, it's now being uh, shared on YouTube. You can Google it. I'll, I'll because uh, Kenneth, my director... The full movie on YouTube now? Yes, okay. it's the full uh, movie now. So, very recently, it's now released by Cinema One. From there, she continued to reap laurels. She won another Best Actress Award for her role in the Sinulog short film Milagros and Best Supporting Actress Award in another Sinulog short film Bugti. But despite the accolade she has received as a film actress, she still finds acting on stage more challenging. Of course, stage. Why? Because, you know, in stage you have, it's raw. Uh, if you commit a mistake, would it, unlike films where in take two and the le, and take three etc. But for stage, dire direcho, no matter what. Off stage and off camera, Ligaya continues to work in the academe. Acting is her passion, but teaching is her vocation. I never did leave uh, my working station because I have shoot or I have uh, engagement, especially the film. Now, I, I see to it that I, I tell my directors, the filmmakers, that I have classes if you could have it late in the night or during weekend. If I have to assess myself, how am I in this as my stature as an actress, film, and kung okay na ko. Wala ang anak bitaw sa dana. Okay na ko. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, I had the honor of working with Mang Ligaya Rabago in a Cebuano feature film three years ago. An experience I will cherish forever. Congratulations, Mang Gaying. May your tribe increase. More to come here on my side of town, right after the break. Be kind to your eyes with Transitions lenses. Transitions adapt to changing light while protecting your eyes from glare and UV. Welcome to my side of town. Welcome back. Could I feel good? After talking to Jiggy Jr. a while ago, I'm here with uh, a very pretty 
lady also belongs to the uh, media industry. As a matter of fact, she started her job in the media, Sasibu Daily News, marketing and, and sales and marketing. Then she moved to the Freeman Daily for two years, or TV5 first as a news reporter, and uh, then Freeman Daily. And now she is with Cebu Grand Hotel again, uh, doing sales and marketing. So please welcome the pretty Noreen Zermis. Hi. Thank you, sir, for having me. Um, <laughs> hello. Hello, everyone. Did I introduce you correctly? I, I hope yes. I got it right. Okay, okay. Let's start with, um, you said to me off camera that you're a BS Bio graduate. Yes, sir. Then you shifted to AB English and you mm -hmm. landed in the print media eventually after graduation. So how did that happen? Um, actually, I didn't start with media right away. I first, my first job was I was a college registrar, an assistant college registrar in my aunt's school. And then after that, I, I was into research. Uh, I was hired by Makapagal and Associates. I did research for Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, USAID, and um, also for uh, Plan International. And then I'm proud to share that one of my researches um, is in the University of Washington Archives. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. So from there, you went to Cebu Daily News or were there other jobs for this? Uh, I was invited by then the HR of Cebu Daily News to, to do a temp job actually because um, the, the head of market and the assistant marketing there was on maternity leave. Okay. And then after that, I, I, I did like a year there to, uh, and then on-call writer also because they were short of writers. Mm -hmm. And then TV5 came. Oh. First, I was hired to be the regional head for public service. Okay. And then since I'm really very <laughs> eager to learn, I, try, I would uh, sit beside my mentor there you see Ramil Paikan oh, yeah. every afternoon before the all the, the stories would come in then I would watch him edit um, what's this news items to exactly yes, well, and I didn't know how to write in yeah Sabuano that's what I was about to ask you because uh, your orientation AB English car and then you to say I was writing in today. English and yeah you were writing in English and then suddenly TV5 came BAM Cebuano yeah. so was the transition hard it was so hard in fact I would listen to DYHP back then, kanang mga drama nila in the afternoon, just so I could get used to to talking in, in perfect desire and then translating it to, into writing. And then, Sir Ramil encouraged, encouraged me to write in in, oh. in desire. And then, he would let me assist him in editing the news items. That's how I learned about, that's agree? how I was able to write oh. in desire. What, 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 was there a time that you also... Uh anchored uh, the newscast? Yes, um, I was anchoring the news bulletin uh, every 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. alternate with Dennis Tanok. Oh, Dennis, yeah. Yes. Where's the guy now? He's with Freeman. <laughs> oh, good. Um, because I was asking you that because I myself, when I started anchoring the news, because I was into FM for a long time, and that time FM was FM, English FM, not the FM that we have nowadays, like the, the ones I was talking about to Jiggy uh, a while ago. So the, 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 the problem was uh, you, had, you had a pong, and then you, you, you went into the Cebuano newscast, so sometimes you had the tendency to pronounce a Cebuano word that you thought it's an English word. Yes. Like me, for example, human, I pronounce it human. Mm -hmm. True. Right? So, how long have you been with uh, TV5? Two years. Uh, like I've said, I started as public service coordinator for Region 7, and then after that, I was promoted to desk editor, mm -hmm. and then I be uh, after that, I was made into an assistant assistant producer mm -hmm. for the news and then I became executive producer and then the news director. Did you also have a radio program there? Because TV5 that time has an FM radio, I guess. No. Okay. I, they thought that I was better on yeah. television. Yeah. Because of your, you know, visual. Because television is supposed to be a perfect marriage of audio and video. And I think, well, not I think, but I'm sure you have that. But radio is also a good training for you to become more spontaneous. Anyway, 
Uh, two years at TV5, and then sad to say, things didn't look good uh, eventually. So, but still, did you ever miss doing, uh, covering the news beats? In, Always. Uh, yeah. Like, the f that first morning after I left TV5, I missed the sound of my, my, my phone beeping. Like, because when I was still doing news desk um, editing, they don't have boundaries. I mean, Manila would call you any time of the day if they, if they want news from you. Mm. Like, I, I could vividly remember someone would call me, someone called me from Manila at 2 a.m. and yes. she told me, Mom, may nabuntis daw dyan ng duwende. I mean, it, <laughs> it's so absurd, but then you have to, to listen to, you, you have to attend to this to this uh, question but, and you yourself you didn't know even if, if that story exists because we're supposed to be 24 hours 7 yeah. they would call you in the middle of the night asking for a, a an update of uh, a certain you know uh, news that came out although still unconfirmed but what can you do you have yeah. to give at least that's part of the job I signed uh, it for yeah. I signed up for it yeah. and then like and then you really miss a lot of special occasions with your family um, Remember when Gaisano South got burned yeah. it was during Christmas and then yeah. um, the Gihulngan earthquake that was during Valentine's yes, so yes. You really have to put your family aside during this So as a, as a mother, uh, you have a son now uh, which is about how, 10 years 10. old? Okay. So when you were in the, in the news um, platform at that time, how did you, how did you juggle your time? What, especially time, quality time with your, with your son? Um, the Yaya always. Okay. The, she always gave like the best of kanang kuan, kanang assistance to me. That's why um, I felt sad when she left because, of course, she got married. Mm. That's why she helped me a lot. And, of course, the father of my baby. Yeah. Now you're in the hotel business uh, doing sales and marketing. Uh, we have Christmas, Christmas is around the corner, and then we have Sinulog and I've, I've been talking to guys in the hotel industry and to them, uh, according to them, that kung kanus ama supposed to be you spend time with your family on, on holidays like Christmas and, and other, you know, like Sinulo, for example, mm -hmm. you cannot because you have to stay in the hotel because that's the busiest season uh, uh, as far as the work is concerned. Yes, like our schedule for December is already full. Most of our function rooms are already booked, um, and this we have to attend to. Like um, inquiries right now, it's coming in on a daily basis, okay. and almost like more than thirty inquiries, and you have to attend to, to each one of them, and then um, give them service, make them make them choose you over all the other competitors. There are a lot, mm -hmm. and it's really tough time to be in this business right now here in Cebu. Like almost every month, another hotel yeah. is open. Yes. Sprouting like mushrooms, yes. all over Cebu, all over Metro Cebu, so all over Cebu City. Marketing our property is really tough. You need to make them like believe in your brand. So now that you are in Cebu Grand Hotel, what is your typical day like? Uh, unlike before, when you were with TV Five or in Freeman or in Cebu Daily News, now. Um, I can say it's pretty routinary. Oh. Like. I wake up in the morning, I go to the office, you know what's going to happen, you know what you, do, you need to do, and then you go home, and then repeat, do it the next day. And like when I was still with news, you don't know what's going to happen. Though you have a deadline, like um, all stories should be in by 12, but who knows, there might be breaking, nani kalit biha mubuto, kapitulyo, or whatever, the city hall, you can never tell, and you cannot just predict kind of what's next, and that's why you will always be on your toes and always be ready to deploy like um, especially when I became the news director and I was handling like the whole newsroom too much responsibility and news wasn't my orientation so like crying was the next thing I could think of especially when most of my workmates back then were older than me no. and they know the, the the business more than I do yeah. okay most of them came from other networks yes, yes. and some of these people if not uh, yeah, most of these people were my colleagues back then at the mm -hmm. Giant Network. In but way. that happened when, when Rami left, uh -huh. and then I was like left to what's this to handle all of his duties. Was that a cultural it was shock a, for you? No, a big. The, it was a big pair of shoes to fill uh -huh. in. Yeah, really. It, um, 
There were times that I don't even, I can't visit the parlor. I, that's when I tried to learn cutting my own hair, dyeing my own hair. Well, <laughs> you have to, to take on the, the, the responsibilities. But still you miss those things. Every day. Mm. Give it a chance. Stress. Give it a chance again to, to be in the media. Would you, would you, would you take it? Would you grab the opportunity? Um, of course. Yeah. Okay, maybe let's talk about this in some other time with the proper forum. Yes, yeah. So, Noreen, I couldn't thank you enough for, for, thank you for, also, for joining thank you me and, and for congratulations going out of your way. I know you still have a work, but uh, I pull you out of your work area just to be no, with I us here. No, I took the half day off oh, for good, this one. Good, good. So, I'd like to thank you enough. Ladies and gentlemen, Noreen Turmis here in my side of town and more to come right after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Be kind to your eyes with Transitions Lenses. Transitions adapt to changing light while protecting your eyes from glare and UV. As a child, I was addicted to radio drama. After my last class in the morning, I had to run from school to my house so I wouldn't be late for my favorite drama serial. Four decades later, I found myself working with my favorite radio drama actors. Never in my wildest dream that I would be sharing the microphone with these soap opera legends. Now, let me show you the world of radio drama. Let's go now to DYSS Super Radio and observe how a radio drama is made. Come on, let's go. Yaya, tanawag ko. Ang ayan ka ay ko sa kung gisulob di ba? Ang ayan yun ka ayum, ma'am. Hmm, humot aoy, humot ka yung biuda. Biyuda ka tiyan. Huwag pa ganit maminyo, biyuda na. Pero kung doon naman ko'y gimahayan sa tibuok na kong kinapuhi, Hubert, mo ko tong freaking confession na akong gihimo. What? Mo to siya naglanan sa tanang kong kalbaryo. Sa tanang kong kakasakit. Saan ko sa langit ang akong pagbasol? Na nagisuwat ko katong mga punga. That freaking I love you, Hubert. I hate myself. For more than half a century, radio has always been the most convenient source of information and entertainment. Filipinos, especially those in the countryside, where news and entertainment can be hard to come by, radio has become their constant companion. Radio is sound, but to anyone attuned to the immediate surroundings, to life itself, radio can be a stark reminder of the good, the bad, the funny, the bittersweet. In the case of radio drama that has been on the airwaves for seven decades now, it is still considered as the most effective storytelling medium. Aljean Abakita, the drama supervisor and assistant production director of DYSS Super Radio RGMA, still believes in its power and magic. Sa pati karon ng basihan nito ng survey, kada mga legitimate yung mga survey sa radio, dako kaya ng slat na kaunon sa drama. Kano ha? Ang mga tao mangita yung drama, kaya na pa may mga tao mahabilin ng silang panimalay. Kaya ang ato ang cater ini, ang atong customer ini, kato mga naasa balay, mga mama, mga wak na mga trabaho, na retire na, naapan na sila karon. Pamatuod ni Ana, nagpanahon ko doon na mga survey, makita na ito na naagin sila porsyento na pandrama. In fact, sa patakar, doon na yung mga bagong istasyon nga magpudus o sabi sila ang drama. That means, doon na pagili sila yung public. Listening percentage and drama sa pagsakaroon, depende na sa pagpresenta o sa klasiya sa drama ang imong represent. Radio is pure audio. That's where the imagination comes to play. And the voice actor's responsibility is how to make the listeners picture a particular scene using only their imagination. Oh, 
sa voice acting kay kanang ipakita nimo ang imagination ba imo mapakita sa voice lang sa TV makita man kay sa sa TV man god dili man kaita mo gamit sa kanang deep bitaw nga kanang kanang sa emotion bitaw sir kay mata akong giingon nga oh expression sa naong og nasuko isuko lang sa nimo imo facial expression Okay na, masabtan na. Pero sa radyo man good, pinaagi mas imong tingog. So kung magtingog lang sa ka nga, dili ni mo ipagawas yun. Ang unsay kuan, unsay real ni mo nga kuan, di man kaya ka masabtan. So, more good sa ang radyo yun. No? Radio drama is also a multitasking job. Therefore, the actors are required to switch to different characters using their voices when the need arises. <laughs> ay nga na mga sir, ay <laughs> ay onsa mga godi ay, kay onsa mga di akong buhaton sir onsa may buot ni mga ipasabot uh, sir Dante onsa ay gusto ni mga ipabuhat na ko sir uh, mami pangato na ba ta? yaya <laughs> sa naawot ko ang ayan kaay ko sa kong gisol o diba ang ayan di kaayo ma'am Hmm, umota oy. Humot ka yung biyuda. Hmm? Biyuda ka dyan. Huwag pa ganit mabiyo, biyuda na. Hoy, tutukin ko mayo ba? Pinood mong angayan ko. Angayan lagi. Fashionista kay imong dating. Ay, yun na na. Murad kang inday ayan lagi na. Ang sa kadi ha? Nakakita kang nagsulong siya ini? Awa, hinoon, pero osada sa disolob ni Miss Amber. Kanto bang may dipahigayon na fashion show sa butik? Mao magi na si Nina, aba? Yabag ka? Ako tao ni creation, no? When other media platforms dwelling in current issues, sensationalized news presentations and gory crime stories, radio drama becomes a breath of fresh air to the listeners who want to escape from harsh reality. They can easily relate to the heroes and heroines of their favorite soap opera, mostly the underdog. Hmm, hopefully lang nga magpadayon lang yun ang drama sa radyo. Maunay kong pagtuo, murag dilig yun bawa kay dagan magyapong fanatic like sa among mga drama, dagan magyapong magkuan, magtext, dagan mga messages na regarding sa mm, drama, mga story. And with today's heavy digital landscape, radio drama is still finding ways to survive and even flourish. Save yourself some dignity, Gaga! Ni ang para makontento ka! What is this, ma'am? Are you resigning? Does Hubert already know? Grabe! Ugado ka! Dili pa ka recover! Pero ang tinood, Kamu si Third Day anak kuyuk. Hubert, kung padahin kamu insist na si Third Day anak kuyuk na lunch day, butuo na kung matino na kisote ni Amber na nangapulong ka. Shame on you! Di ba mas mamiligal ka? Laki pang bata na nangyong imong desisyon? Pabilang niya pong tang maminaw, mo suportar, o niya paminaw ang mga drama na hindi mo nga sinibwano. Kaya kita ang taga-sugbo, kita ang kinakauna din sa mga drama. In fact, doon yung mga artista sa Mindanao area, pero nagtudo nito si Buano Sam. Kauban to kanhi din he. Kung ang kining drama din he, yun sa sugbo. Ang drama mo ni Silvi siyang murag alter ego sa iyong kinabuhi. Kaya ang mga writer ni ini, ang ibasihan nila sa ilang pagsuwat, ang mga experience sa Manila kataadlaw. Ang mga tao nga ilang nahibawan na doon ay ingon ini kasi natiyan gihubad pinagin sa drama. Basit ikaw usak ka nini sa mga karakter? Basit ikaw usak ka sa mga kontrabida, leading man o ka supporting roles kini? O niya mahibaw ka ng murag nag-ako? Ah, basit pa man, usak nga tungan to, usbo na ako ako kinaya. Arwa mahimu kong idolo sa uban.
Just a little trivia. In the early days of radio dramas, most, if not all, the major sponsors were soap companies. Colgate, Palmolive, Procter & Gamble, and Philippine Refining Company. Thus, the term soap opera was born. Well, I'd like to thank our guests, Jiggy Jr., Noreen Tormis, Ligaya Rabago, DYSS Drama Supervisor, Ajin Abakita, and his radio actors, Mr. Edgar Gutierrez for paving the way, and Super Bobby Nosaro for giving us the go signal to do the video shoot in the recording studio. And thanks to you for joining me again. I'm Bam Dilazon. Till next time.